beer drinkers. I'm Bobby Glavina. And I am Professor Bill, and this is the, the West Coast, Coast Beer Cast. So tonight we have Northern California, NorCal. NorCal beers. Yes. NorCal beers. NorCal. The NorCal. That's not, I don't think that's how they talk. Well, it just sounded good. Like, uh, they're, like they're from Chicago and then they moved to NorCal. Okay. I like that. I don't know. This kind of works. It's spontaneous. All right. Let's talk about what we're talking about. The uh, first one we have up is from Tioga Sequoia Brewing Company, Half Dome. It's a wheat. It's a California wheat. And, um, yeah, Half Dome, so I'm guessing Northern California. And they're well, named after Sequoia. Those of you that have watched other episodes of BeerCast know that I like wheats and Bill does it. So. A white, no way, a Moylands. Moylands. White Christmas in May. Yeah, that's what they had. Well, this I must be know. old. What? I don't know. A white Christmas spiced winter lager. Was mm-hmm. it on sale, I hope? No, it was expensive. With white pepper. It's either really early or really late. All right, after that, Sierra Nevada, one of our bigger breweries. This is their estate, the homegrown ale, which means it's all organic. It's all homegrown. And that's all they said, is that it's, uh, it's completely natural. Okay. So we'll see if we can taste any difference. All right, now we're on to Mammoth Brewing Company, and which, uh, if you've ever been to Mammoth Skiing, you, and you've tasted some of their beers probably, because they have them all over there. Um, the IPA, 395, which is Highway 395, which are on forever if you're driving from L.A. to Mammoth. Which is what we do, because we're in L.A.-ish. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so IPA. IPA. So from super hoppy to super dark, this is another Mammoth. It's the Double Nut Brown. A big brown porter. Okay. All right. Brown porter. I never had a brown porter. They're no, brown I haven't either. They're usually, They're usually like nut brown ales. Yeah. Like Newcastle are better, but. Hmm. That'd be interesting. Okay. Yeah. And then on, we saved the sourest and, dare I say, the best for last Russian River. We have two for you. This is the Sanctification Sour Blonde. And I'm totally going to butcher this. I've <laughs> practiced and I still do a terrible job. It has um, the, the sour yeast, the Britannomyces. I think I did it. Okay. Britannomyces. Now that's the super, not secret, because everyone knows, because they read on the label. It's like the super secret sour um, yeast. So that's a sour blonde as yeah, opposed sour to sour blonde sanctification, and then oh, I was going to say as opposed word. to a dingy blonde, it's a sour blonde. <laughs> okay, which is probably better. I'm big. Okay. Uh, <laughs> not that I know what I'm talking about at all. Um, the supplication. The supplication. And this is also from. This is Russian River also. Oh, okay. All right. So another sour. This one has a little bit of cherry. Now I've had this one. This one blew me away, um, and the cherries didn't bother me. Usually cherries, I just I hate everything cherry, even cherry pie. This was amazing, so we'll see. Definitely the um, most intense of okay. our flavors, so we save that for the end. Well, I've never liked a sour beer yet, so we got two of them tonight. Maybe I'll like one. Yeah, we'll see. Okay. Hello, beer drinkers. Weldon here. Some splendid breweries in Northern California. Let's talk about Sierra Nevada. In 1972, Ken Grossman visited Chico, California, fell in love with the town, and decided to move there. In 76, Grossman opened a homebrew supply store and over the next few years honed his brewing skills. The availability of quality hops for homebrewers was limited in the 70s, and so Grossman traveled to the source in Yakima, Washington, brought back 100 pounds of brewer's cut whole cone hops, and began brewing the hop forward beer Sierra Nevada's famous for. Grossman opened Sierra Nevada Brewery in 1980 and spent the last of his money and many test batches before getting the perfect balance into his paleo. The intense citrus pine flavor of the Cascade Hop became one of the signatures of Sierra Nevada and helped define the West Coast style of brewing. Let's talk about Russian River. Vinny Salerzo grew up in a winemaking family in Temecula, California and taught himself to homebrew in the basement of the winery. In 1994, Vinny opened Blind Pig Brewing Company in Temecula and earned awards at the Great American Beer Festival and the critical acclaim 
of being the first brewer to make a double IPA commercially, Blind Pig Inaugural Ale. In 97, Vinny and his wife Natalie moved to Sonoma County where Vinny took a job as the sole brewer at Russian River Brewing Company, then owned by Corbel Champagne Cellars. While at Corbel, Vinny started experimenting with brewing funky beers in wine barrels. He had just one barrel at the time and created their flagship beer, Pliny the Elder. In 2003, Corbel decided to get out of the beer business and sold Russian River Brewing Company brand to Vinny and Natalie. Okay, so that was our history segment from uh, Weldon. Weldon. Yes. Welcome back, yes. Weldon. Welcome back, Weldon. Um, we're just pouring this for our studio audience, the tasters, and noticed what an amazing color contrast. If you can see that, it just goes from like milky pale all the way, just all the colors of the rainbow, except not really the colors of the rainbow. All the, all the shades of beer. All the, yes. Yeah, why did I say that? That's I don't totally know. Okay, uh, anyway, so whatever. It was pretty cool. Looking forward to that. And there's for our studio audience. Enjoy. So up first, <laughs> this is our half. Definitely looks unfiltered. Tioga Sequoia. Wow, that's like fish pond water yeah. right there. It's just... Pineapple. Tastes like pineapple juice. This is the half dome. This is the half dome. Wow, this is the wheat? Yeah. That is, I like that. Wow, that's got Tangy. some zest. Yes. It is. It's got a little bit of pineapple instead of that lemony yeah. tone. I mean, it's got the lemon peel, but then... It has the same quality of pineapple that you get when you go to Adventureland at Disneyland and you get the pineapple swirl. Never had it. You never had, well, it's, it's like soft serve, but it's pineapple. I All I know is I really like this. Yeah. Wheat. Way more flavor than most peps. That's really good. Very nice. Nicely done. Wow. Really refreshing, too. Yes. So up next, the Moylans. The White Christmas. Let's go with uh, Super Early. Winter Lager. It's not an ale. It's so not. Oh, it's a White Christmas terrible. Winter Lager. All sorts of spices. And it looks like a lager, as you can tell. Yeah. It's the only lager of the whole bunch. So... Coriander has mace. Do you know what mace is? Pepper. Mm. Spice. I'm not tasting any peppermint like the other. Not peppermint, but pepper, white pepper. Yeah. It's all like on the tip of your lips. White pepper. Is that what white pepper does, tastes I, like? I guess so. I didn't know there was such a thing as white pepper. There is. My grandma-in-law is allergic to it, so she should not have this lager. It, it tastes like Old Spices. We have a spice rack we got when we were married and left it in storage for six years and then took it out. And uh, and like you smell them and you're like, I don't know what spice it is, but it just smells like generic spice okay. that's kind of outdated. But aside from that pepper thing, don't you get that sweetness on the, like the, the mid-tone of it? Kind of like you get the pepper, then you get like a sweetness and then it kind of finishes bitter. Yeah, and it, it's a flavor journey. Like the malts come out. Yeah, that, there it is, and okay. That, it's good. But then I get that bitter finish. It's weird. It kind of like... It's like the scene from uh, the original Willy Wonka Chocolate Factory, Trailing the Chocolate Factory, when they're they're going through the chocolate tunnel, and it gets kind of creepy. Like, it starts off, nice, oh, I'm putting on chocolate. And then kind of creepy, and you're at the end, you're just kind of bitter. That's what this is to me. <laughs> you, you talk about Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory at least... Every other episode. Do I? Yeah, I think you would like, huh? Something happened at that point in your childhood or something. We need to talk about that. Weird nose, though. I just can't get past that. Yeah, hmm. it's kind of weird. It's different. It's very, I mean, I, I don't dislike it. It's just. It's true. Neutral. It's a, it's a good it's new experience. Switzerland. So. Yes. It's neutral. It's neutral. All right. Okay. Yeah, what is this again? It's a, this uh, is a homegrown ale. I read the description and just kept saying homegrown. It's all natural. And the color is insanely... Caramely. Brisk. Yeah. Like there's... It feels photoshopped. It's like nesty iced tea color. Kind of. Yeah. yeah. Not really... Woo! Mm. Woo! Wow. Wow. They said it was, no. there were wet hops. Yeah. Well, leave it to Sierra Nevada to hop it up. 
Right. Wow. I was expecting just the regular Sierra Nevada. What is that? Just an ale? The green label? Shame on me for not knowing. Just whatever the green label is. I just call it Sierra Nevada. Yeah, the original one. Yeah. Um, I was expecting that, and this is not that. I mean, that's that's like a staple. This is no. really good. This really grows on you. Mm. Yeah, this is very unlike the... Uh, which, I was reading about the the guy who started Sierra Nevada and he spent like a lot of time trying to get the consistency of that first threw out like 30 batches and spent a bunch of money trying to get the right consistency and then this is not consistent with with what it yeah yeah with that other one it's like the original one grew up this is really good yeah but again I'm getting that balance of hops and malt it's like yeah. way hop but then they're the hops Which right are, up front mm -hmm. with the wet hops, I guess what, that's what that is. Wet hops. A farmhouse saison, says the studio oh, audience. Okay. All right. It's good. I like it. Yeah, it's really good. What, what uh, alcohol percentage does it say? It does say. It's a 6.7%. Oh, it doesn't taste like it. On to the 395 IPA. Yes. Those of you that have been to Mammoth, you know. If you missed that 395 turn off like I did, it makes the trip a lot longer. There's no easy way to be able to get back to it. And if you're not paying attention, so anyway, watch out. Okay. So. Whoa. Whoa! What is that? Yikes! Is this dishwater? What is I'm smelling a little bit of everything. <laughs> like. Um. I'm, I can't place that. I can like not. I smelled that before, but I, like. Uh, it tastes like it smells like just mash. The first time I heard, I uh, was in someone's garage when they were home brewing, and I didn't really realize how beer was made. They were just boiling it, and you're like, whoa, that, like that malty. Yeah, there's a lot of malt. Like, okay. dish, but not not dishwater smelling, but just like the ugh. Kind of tastes like dishwater a little bit. Really bitter finish. Really bitter. Yeah. It's intense. It's like a lot of flavor, but it's overpowering. It's completely different from like a stone IPA. No, it's very like rich. It's, not it's like it's like that dessert that you taste, and you're like, "Wow, that's good," but it's just so sweet and intense. It makes like, me want to squint. Yeah, this is just like way too much flavor. Like, there's no separation. It's just everything's on top of each other. And it's all right away, and then it's like a like a malty and a in a bad malt. Afterwards, like a really acidic malt. I need something. I need a potato chip or something. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. On to the mammoth, the double nut brown porter. And this. Whoa, coffee! coffee. Whoa, hello, coffee. Hey. <laughs> Yikes! That's wow. an espresso right there. I mean, it is super sweet. Yikes! Also, lots of chocolate. Mm. Oh my gosh. I, I think I'm drinking iced coffee right now. It's really sweet. It's like carbonated yeah. coffee. <laughs> yes. If you put this, this is in a your breakfast beer, if you put this in your traveler mug, do you? Uh, is that frowned upon at work? <laughs> the answer is yes. Yes, it is frowned upon at work. You can't even smell the alcohol. It smells just like like an iced coffee. So it is. For those of you that you know have to. I, I'm getting the coffee on the end, but it's, ch it's chocolate. It's really sweet yeah. up front. Yeah, really sweet. A, like, I don't beer. enjoy it sweet up front. I don't know. It's a good sipping beer. I mean, I had this with like a piece of chocolate cake or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, this would be really good paired. But just by itself, it's... I mean, we also just had an IPA to be fair. Yeah. But um, really sweet up front. I think you add it with something that was sweeter than this, it would balance nicely. A lot of coffee. A lot of coffee. Now I'm getting the coffee on the finish. I'm not getting any nuts though. That's just dumb. No, nut. no, no nuts. But a little bit of roasted finish too. Mm -hmm. Way, way at the end. Yeah, wow. Definitely a sipping beer. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. I thought it was going to be kind of a, a one note kind of beer. Cold weather beer. Yeah. Not really a, something I drink on a hot day. 
Yeah. On to Russian River, the sanctification. This is a sour blonde. Mm -hmm. So, for those of you that have no idea what a sour is, or a sour blonde for that matter, <laughs> I know what a sour brunette is like. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Definitely smells like a sour. So there's actually the. <laughs> this is as geeky as we're gonna get with beer, I hope. God, it smells so good. Even out of the bottle, wow. it smells good. It has a different yeast, which makes it sour. So oh. this one has. That. It's like spoiled beer. Britannomyces is what they uh, what they're using for their yeast. It's usually Saccharomyces. But this, I, I guess it's a big deal that it's Britannomyces. I, I, I have a feeling we should not be drinking this. Like, that's... Oh, that's good. That sounds like... It's <laughs> so good. It can't be good for you. It's definitely sour. It has that. I'm going to... Just too sour for you? Yeah. It's very sour. Very sour. It's like... It's really good. Super carbonated. Definitely sour. Um, of all those sours, this is a more mellow one. <laughs> it tastes like the, um, what are those called? Warheads? Those little sour candies yes. you would eat like after baseball games. You're like, oh! Yeah. It has that right up front. Exactly. And throughout. That's all it's, I'm getting. That's really good. I, I'm sorry. I don't get the sour beer thing. I just, I just don't. Nothing? Supplication. That's another sour. This one's with cherries. Oh. So we'll see if uh, Bobby K's can oh, be like a sweet. A lot more cherry in the the bottle. I've only had this on draft, and it was so good. I'm, I think I actually teared up a little bit. Wow. It was. What do you think? Not getting a lot of nose. Now that I can handle. It's way different. Because it's a good kind of sour. Yeah, it's that, it's that tart cherry kind of. Black cherry. Like yeah. New York Seltzer black cherry kind of black right. cherry. And it's farther back in your throat. No else to describe it. The other one was like way up front and really like, oh, this is. Yeah, it's still like very it's sour, sick. but it's like a different flavored sour. Acid reflux in a good way sour. There, there is no good way. Can we pick a different metaphor? Like um, you just threw up a little bit in the back here. Like I'm feeling it back here. It, it burns back there a little bit. <laughs> okay. But it really doesn't bother me. It just it's not really the improvement I was looking for. But, um, it's more of like a more of a a burning acidic than like a sour candy kind of thing. Hmm. Well, I definitely, this would be my choice over the other. Yeah. This is the supplication? Yes. The other one's the inflammation? <laughs> no. <laughs> what is it? Sanctification. Oh, sorry. Is, is the sour blonde. Okay. <laughs> supplication is this one. This is the cherry. Okay. Yeah, very, very nice. So, I mean, there's there's a lot of. I can, it's still a lot like going I can on. only handle a little bit. I, don't, I couldn't get yeah. a pint in a way. So, ready for the rundown? Yes. First up, half dome. What do you think? Like it. Love it. Want more of it. My favorite half. It's like a pineapple half. It's like a Heidi Fleissen half. I mean, uh. <laughs> Good. Never mind. All right. Then the Moylans, the, the out of date spices that had like, I don't know, had mace. I don't know what mace is, but I don't want to try it. It was neutral. I think that's what you it was people's eyes. When you <laughs> <want to do. laughs> Go away. <laughs> ah, I think I want to drink this with some with some black pepper, white pepper. Yes. Uh, yeah. It, it wasn't bad, but it was, I don't know. I don't need to have it again. Then on to the estate. This was like solid. If, if you love just Sierra Nevada, if you love just good ales, yeah, have this. Something different. IPA three ninety five. Crazy amount of flavor. Just if you like intense, have at it. But too much for me. If you're burned out on IPAs, try this. It tastes like sage. I couldn't do it. I don't know what juniper berries taste like, but I don't like them. <laughs> the mammoth double nut brown ale porter. 
chocolate The breakfast food. beer. Yes. A lot of coffee. Yeah, it takes you on a magical journey through a chocolate river. It's chocolate espresso river. Yeah. yeah. Then sanctification was just like... So good. So, so good. A sour. Very sour. Like sour lemonade, like sour candy. It's sour blonde. Sour blonde. Um, but really, just really good. Britannomyces, I think the... I don't know, I loved it. Bobby K did not. And then finally, supplication. We failed to mention this has been aged for a year in Pinot Noir barrels. Which is why it tastes so good. Yeah. I liked it. I liked it. It's the only thing cherry that I will enjoy. Um, gotta admit though, I liked it a lot more on draft. It was a lot more flavorful. Mm. This was still, I mean, absolutely drinkable. Just gorgeous flavor. Okay, so what's the Professor Bill pick of the week? Pick of the week. For the first time, we have a split decision. Split decision. I'll let you go first. Well, I really like the Half Dome. Half so that's my pick. And for me, I'm going to have to go with the Sanctification. But we're supposed to pour ours and drink them right now, aren't we? Well, we'll have to do that later. All right. We'll edit it in and be like, whoa, this is delicious. Yes. Perfect. So I'm going Sanctification. Bobby K. Half Dome. Yeah. So I'm going to just reach in over and grab mine. And I'm going to have the rest of the... I don't think there's enough for a pint anyway. And then, yeah, we'll just... There wasn't a lot. So... It's going to spill. Right. Ah! <laughs> All right. Alright. Need a pour. We need a professional pour, by the way. And Applications, is... send them to westcoastbeercast.com. Yes. Okay. Yeah, well, that's not, that's not a email address. Oh, it's not? No. Oh. Okay. You can send them to Bobby K at westcoastbeercast.com. Bobby he K. will review the professional or even you know, for just amateur pouring. Yes. I anyway, will. I enjoy the sanctification. I enjoy the half dome. I'm Bobby K. And I am Professor Bill saying, Now, now that's, that's a beer. beer.